welcome back to my channel. Today we're finally doing an updated feeding all my pets video. I know you guys love watching these videos, so finally doing an update. Now I do make videos about all the animals you're about to see in today's video. So if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more animal videos. You can also learn more about my pets by following me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. First, to start off this video, I want to give a shout out to Exotic Nutrition, a pet supply company that supports this channel. I've been using Exotic Nutrition for about a decade for my pets. And then I started my channel and Exotic Nutrition became a huge support for my channel and what I'm trying to do on this channel, which is educate people about animals. Exotic Nutrition offers a wide range of products for lots of animals such as food for rabbits, treats for chinchillas, sugar glider staple diets, packaged insects for opossums and hedgehogs, and so much more. This is what I feed my pets. I highly recommend it. So be sure to shop at ExoticNutrition.com for your pets and use my coupon code for 10% off your entire order. Check the description for more information. So this video is gonna be a little bit different than the last Feeding All My Pets video where that one I was just kind of showing you my routine. This one I'm gonna be trying to explain a lot more stuff to you so that you kind of know what I'm doing and what's going on and why I'm feeding the animals what I'm feeding them. In the last video, a lot of people were getting confused about certain things like some people didn't know what grazing meant or things like that. So I'm gonna to try to make this video more educational than entertaining, but I think you guys will still really enjoy it. Now, since these are my most watched videos on YouTube, I do wanna give a little bit of like disclaimer and explaining before we get started. Now I am 27 years old. I live on a farm with my husband and I have these animals because I love animals and I enjoy them. And I spend all day caring for these animals and taking care of them and just enjoying having them. A lot of these animals are rescues, but not all of them. Now, this is not the right choice for everybody. This is quite a lot of animals, but it's what I enjoy and YouTube is my full-time job, allowing me to stay home and care for these animals. And I've actually been working from home for a long time before I started doing YouTube, so that is um, why I have so much time to take care of my pets and be around them. Now, a lot of these animals do require quite a lot of attention and care. You can see each individual species by watching the All My Pets video 2019, which I uploaded just a few weeks ago. If you would like to learn more about each animal, you can also check down below for different playlists or go to my playlist on YouTube where I do a lot of videos about each animal. And then you can also follow me on Instagram where I do post a lot more updates and stuff like that on all of the different pets that I have. And then one more thing, please don't call my pets a collection. They are a living, breathing beings. They have emotions, they have needs, they are intelligent. And so a collection is something you can kind of just fold up and put in a drawer and that is not what this is. Um, this, is this is not a collection. These are my pets that are really part of my family. And of course, last thing is please don't attack me over what you're seeing in the video. You can ask questions, have a conversation with me, stuff like that. So before attacking me, please watch the entire video and please watch it with the sound on. It's really important. Don't know how many comments I get of people who watch the video with it muted. But yeah, so let's have a conversation uh, instead of attacking me. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start from the very beginning of the morning all the way down to the evening before I'm about to go to bed. So enjoy. In the morning, the first thing that I do is come outside and feed the farm animals, all the animals outside basically. We live in El Paso and we have really hot summers. So I like to come outside and get it all done uh, early in the morning before it gets hot. So usually I am done, uh, usually about 8.30, maybe nine at the latest, but usually around 8.30 I'll finish feeding outside. I start off by feeding the free range and freedom flock birds. During winter, they will actually wait for me at my door, but during summer, a lot of them won't even come in to eat. I feed the birds a scratch mix. This is just seeds and grains. These animals need a lot of protein, but I actually don't need to provide them with that because they find so much food around the farm. That's why a lot of them will not come to eat right now. They are full from eating bugs and stuff around the farm. 
During winter though, I do provide them with a lot more food and more variety. But they have a job to do. They are the official pest control of the farm. So that is what they are doing now that it's summertime. And the goose always enjoys some extra food. In this flock we have peafowl, ducks, one goose, lots of chickens, guinea fowl, and white homing pigeons. Next I'm going to be feeding the birds that are in cages. I have to feed my game roosters. These guys are fighting chickens, so they can't be out with the other chickens. They're actually rescues. My hand-raised peacocks are also fed in their pen. Later I might let them out to get some exercise, but I want them to be able to eat first. There's also a lot of the white homing pigeons that come in here and eat from the bowl, but they aren't actually kept in this pen. They go in and out as much as they want. My lane ducks are in a large pen that they share with a goat. And then I'll check my hen house, pick up eggs, and make sure that they have layer pellets in their bowl. They are free range, so honestly I feed them very little during this time of year, but I still like for them to have access to their laying pellets since it's really important for their health. And from here I will feed any hens with chicks that I have in cages. I keep them in small cages for the first couple of weeks, which really increases their chances of survival. Right now I have some chickens with chicks as well as a peahen with chicks and hopefully more pea chicks to come soon. And then I also go and check on my prairie dogs. They eat mostly hay, which I refill about once a week. And then I'll also check their water and give them some vegetables. Next I'll feed Petunia, the mini pig. She gets a bag of veggies twice a day. I try to keep her off of grains for the most part. That's really fattening and it can be difficult to maintain her weight. This provides her with lots of nutrients and is filling. Then I'll feed our alpacas, llamas, and goats. Give them grain and check their water. So one of the things people didn't understand from the last video is that when I'm feeding grain to the animals like the alpacas and the goats and the llamas, this is something that is like a supplement for them. This is not their main meal. This is not something I want them to get full on. So I take out one of these buckets and as you can see it's filled with grain and this is going to be shared between all of the animals. I do measure it a certain amount of cups per animal and then they're able to really get enough of it. Now one of the things people did not understand is that this is not kibble. This is not like feeding your dogs. It's not like giving the cats kibble or something like that. This is a totally different concept. This is something that a lot of people don't even offer. Um, sometimes they'll only offer it for animals that are um, pregnant or nursing or, or need to gain weight. I actually just include it in the animal's food as part of their meal all the time. Uh, but this is not something that is necessarily like the most important part of their meal. It's important because it does have a lot of minerals and vitamins and things like that that keeps them healthy and keeps their coat looking nice. 
uh, but this is not their food. And so a lot of people are like, oh, they're not getting enough. They're so gonna be so hungry. Uh, they're not gonna be full on this, that's for sure. That's something you don't want. They can actually, <laughs> it's springtime. I'm gonna have to wait a minute. This is not something that you want them to be full on. If they're gonna be that full on stuff like this, they can actually get really sick, they can bloat, they can colic, all kinds of things like that. They can have um, kidney problems or just things like that from getting too much of this. So if you thought that they weren't getting a lot, that is correct. That is what we want. Um, yeah, it's, it's not kibble. I guess that's the most important thing to remember here is that we're not feeding like a dog or a cat. These animals' diet consists of grasses and plants. They spend all day eating this, and it's actually called grazing. I usually don't feed hay for two reasons. Either it's summer and they're out grazing, or if it's winter or if we're in a drought, they will have a one ton round bale to eat from. But today we are feeding hay since the round bales have finished and we're at the beginning of irrigation season. So pretty soon the grasses will be coming up, but um, until then we're just feeding some hay to them that's uh, hay bales. So now I'm gonna be driving around the farm, taking hay and grain to the animals. The first stop is the barn. Next, I'm driving out to Shakespeare's stall. He's usually out grazing, but he usually does wait for me um, around his pen, like around 7.30 in the morning, he'll be waiting here. Shakespeare is a senior pony, so he does need extra food. My other horses are actually overweight just from grazing. So I'll lock him in so that he can eat all of his food, and then later I'll let him back out so that he can run around in the fields. He's almost always waiting for me, but once in a while he isn't, so I have to call him to come in. Shakespeare! Next I'm going to go to the alpaca fields, giving them grain and taking their hay to them.
The boy alpacas live with the goats, so I will separate them during feeding time. During my morning routine, the dogs get a lot of exercise, running and swimming. They just love it out here. Now that's about it for the animals outside. Let's go inside and take care of some of those animals. So it's about 8.30 in the morning now and it's time to feed the parrots their first meal. They will be getting chop. This is a mix of chopped up vegetables, grain, and fruit. Usually about eight vegetables, two fruits, and something like quinoa or wild rice. I have a lot of these recipes on my website at www.mjhappytales.com. It's really important to feed fresh vegetables to your parrots every day. A lot of people think that they just eat seeds and nuts, and in the wild they do eat a lot of that. But in captivity, that diet is too high in calories and fattening. So we have to change their diet to keep them healthy as companion parrots. I will often put the parrots' cages outside during this time because sunlight and fresh air is beneficial to their health, and they also enjoy watching the animals outside. Later, they'll come back into the house, have several hours of playtime outside of their cages. Be sure to come to my next live stream because the parrots are always flying in the background and it's a lot of fun. Now, smaller parrots like parakeets or budgies need more seeds, so they'll be getting half and half and the canaries will also get seeds and chop. Although I think the canaries love the chop the most. Then I'll be feeding my dogs. I have six dogs, four corgis, and my retired service dog and my chihuahua. They're on a raw diet, which you can learn more about because I did a whole video just on what I feed my dogs in a week. Now later in the afternoon, I will feed some of the other animals. So right now I have my cats to feed and I've really changed up their routine because they started to get too fat. So now what I do for them is I am feeding them uh, Purina Beyond Wild. I really like this food because it is super high in protein. It doesn't have fillers like corn, alfalfa, stuff like that. So I really like um, the recipe and the ingredients for this food. And they get one third of a cup each of dry food. And then on top of that, they each get their own canned food. Uh, so one per cat. And I'm also using the Purina Beyond. And I really like it because they have a lot of different flavors. And when it comes to canned food, my cats are super picky, more picky than when it comes to their dry food. So they've really been good about eating this. They like the texture. That's been a big issue with them is the texture of the food. I like that this one has a lot of different flavors. It has like quail, duck, uh, different types of fish, things like that. And so I'll get them all the different flavors so that they do have something different to eat every day. I like to provide them with that. Wet food is really important for a cat's diet because they do need a diet that is high in moisture. This keeps them healthy, this keeps their kidneys healthy, and since my cats won't eat a raw diet, I haven't been able to get them on different types of food, this has been really good uh, for them. I think this is a really good choice since they don't want to eat the raw food.
Then I'll go out and check on my tortoise, give him some veggies or weeds. I try to change it up for him, but he is a little picky. And he does have constant hay available as well. one planted aquarium with just a few fish but I do like to give them a variety of food so that they get something different every day and today what they are getting is bloodworms which they really enjoy. Now let's take a look at some of my reptiles. I have six geckos and two bearded dragons. My bearded dragons get some salad every day, but every few days they do also get bugs. My geckos do not eat every day, but when I do feed them, I switch between live insects and their fruit food. So sometimes I will give them crickets dusted in calcium or dubia roaches, and then other days I'll give them their fruit formula, which has a lot of protein. but the leopard gecko does only eat insects. I like to provide a wide variety of insects for my reptiles. Then I'll also take my salamanders out of their tanks and feed them, and mostly I feed them just dubia roaches, sometimes some mealworms, but uh, mainly dubia roaches. Now in the evening, I'll feed some of my small pets. So in this room, I have my chinchillas, guinea pigs, and a few other animals. And so my chinchillas, rabbits, and guinea pigs all get the exotic nutrition adult rabbit food. Personally, uh, this is the one that I like to be able to use for all of them. However, exotic nutrition does have a different bag for each uh, type of animal, guinea pigs, rabbits, adult rabbits, adult guinea pigs, um, and chinchilla food. But personally, I like this one for all of them, and it's a little bit easier for me to, um, to feed them all from the same type, and I really like the ingredients and everything that this has. These animals in here get a small amount of pellets to make sure they don't get too fat. <laughs> and then they also eat their hay. The rabbits outside get a lot of pellets, but they usually burn a lot more energy since they do kind of live like wild rabbits. I have a whole video all about that um, in my rabbit playlist. Then everyone gets their Timothy hay. I'll clean out Merida's litter box. She is such a clean rabbit. Then they all get their veggies, except for the chinchillas who will get dried flowers. Exact Nutrition actually offers this really awesome flower mix for chinchillas, rabbits, and guinea pigs. Mainly I use it for my rabbits and chinchillas, but I absolutely love this mix. I was really excited when they came out with it because I'd actually been looking for something like this that would be um, really good for my chinchillas. So I have been using this and the chinchillas love it. And I'm able to give it to them every day because it makes me feel sad when I'm giving vegetables to the other animals and the chinchillas aren't getting any. 
And then usually at the end of the day, I will feed my sugar gliders and hedgehog. My sugar gliders have their own pellets, and then they will also get their HPW food, again available from Exotic Nutrition. This one I just love, and they love it. It's super convenient, and they like it. It's also really healthy for them. They'll also get live mealworms, and of course their fresh food mix. This consists of egg, chicken, and a mix of veggies and fruit. Usually about six vegetables and two fruit. The hedgehog will get some of the fresh food mix as well with a little bit of cat kibble that my cats eat. And then they will also get insects or canned cat food. My hedgehog is older and having trouble eating kibble, so he is eating less kibble and more canned cat food. Uh, really good stuff though, it's the same that I was offering my cats. Now that's pretty much it for my day, but I did also want to include my snakes. I'm not going to be showing them because I know a lot of people don't like that, but I am going to be talking about them and, well, showing them, just not showing them eating. So my snakes eat about every two weeks. I found that that's what works for them. They eat frozen thawed rodents. Now Jasper likes for me to just leave the frozen thawed rat in his tank, somewhere like over a rock or something like that. And then he'll come out once everybody's asleep and actually get the rat. Now Onyx is a little bit different. He likes for the rat to kind of be dangled around in his cage and then he'll strike at it. And then my sand boa, he actually eats during the day. These two ball pythons, they do eat late at night. Uh, the sand boa does eat during the day. And then the only way I've figured out for him to be able to eat is that he wants to be put in a paper bag with his food and left alone for a couple of hours. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to get more updates on the animals. And I will see you guys next time.